Hello and welcome to the History of Costume presentation for Project 1 for Courtney Andrews. I have selected the paper doll presentation and have created a slideshow through PowerPoint to present this to you. For this project, I have made a hypothetical persona named Victoria. Victoria is an actress who has starred in many hypothetical historic films. In this presentation, we will go over some of her major costumes and also dive into what fashion items from that era influence the design. The first film from the historic era that we will go over is Egypt. During the New Kingdom time era in Egypt, most women wore pleated or draped dresses, usually made from fine, transparent linen. The rich Egyptian would often decorate their clothes and would also wear jewelry. You can see those influences in this garment where she is wearing a fine transparent linen costume with rich Egyptian decorated neck piece. Another garment worn was called a kalasaris. This garment would cover either one or both shoulders or would be worn with straps. The top style line could go up above the neck or could lie beneath the breasts. The fit might be very tight or occasionally could be worn loose depending on the preference of the wearer. They often would wear a belt which would be held together by a sash and it would hold up the folds of cloth. The ancient Egyptians went barefoot most of the time, but sometimes would wear sandals for special occasions or if their feet were likely to get hurt. As you can see in this design, it was influenced by the pleated garments. Also in this design, she is barefoot as in most of the other designs, seeing to how that was their preference. Many Egyptian women adopted a look similar to the one shown here, where a loincloth or shawl would be worn. The shawl was often made of a pleated material, and also with this costume, accessories were also often worn. As you can see, the influence of the colorful sash and accessories, as well as the uh, sheer linen material, is seen in this costume. The most common dress for women was a simple sheath. A rectangular piece of cloth was folded to make a tube. This style was worn either above or below the breasts. In this costume, you can see this sheath has been placed below the breasts and also the breasts have been covered in the sheer linen material and decorated with accessories as common with Egyptian women of that time era. Here you can see the individual clothing items presented in the previous slides for the Egyptian time period. We will now move on to the Greek influence for the costumes featured in this presentation. The fabrics that the Greeks wore were sometimes spun in their homes or made from a linen fabric that was imported. The outfits usually were a square or rectangular piece of folded fabric that was formed around the body with pins either at the side seams or shoulders. Also, it was very common to be belted. The clothing would have been dyed bright colors and would have been decorated with fun patterns. As you can see in this costume, she has a very colorfully dyed outer garment and is also wearing a colorfully dyed belt. 
Most men and women wore a variation called the chaton. The chaton was a long garment held together at the shoulder. Wearing belts with this garment was also popular, and most use a belt around the waist to tuck in the chaton, especially around the chest area or below it. This sort of belt or breastband, called a strophin, sometimes used in a similar way as we used the modern day bra. A peplos or peplum was a type of tunic worn by women. This is a body length garment that is tubular and is a, has a top edge that is folded down so that was the top of the tube is now draped below. Also, the Greeks were not particularly fond of wearing shoes, especially at home, and they typically went barefoot. We will now move into the Roman influence in her costumes. Stolas were long dress-like garments, usually with short sleeves, held together with clasps named a fibula, and had a flounce on its bottom. They were fastened by the girdle high above the waist. Some women would also wear a tunic. The female's tunics were a little bit tighter than the male's tunics, accentuating the woman's figure and were usually tied with a belt. The tunic actually resembled dresses similar to modern time. This brings us to the end of the Greek and Roman era. Here are the individual costumes used for the paper doll for those time eras. We will now move on to the Middle Age influence in her costume. Women of the Middle Ages were expected to cover their hair after marriage with a veil. This was a sign of Christian chastity and modesty. It also seems that a lot of these are still taught in some European Christian customs today. A fun fact about the Middle Ages is that all classes of people wore colorful garments. Bright colors such as royal purple or blues were not forbidden for all but the nobility. Medieval women would wear full-length tunics that covered their body down to their ankles. This fashion in the Middle Ages was known as kirtles and was often worn over a shirt. When in public, the woman often wore even a shorter kirtle over the tunic. This brings us to the end of the Middle Age influence for the costume. Our last time era that we are going to go over is the Mesopotamia influence era. Most of the textiles worn were made from animal or decorated with feathers from the Mesopotamia era. The animal skins would be turned inside out and the wool combed. It would later be used to make wool. This art was actually not found until a very later part of the Mesopotamia era. Women would wear wrapped shawls covered with tears of fringe. Fringe shawls were worn over their shoulders and dyed a variation of colors. Both women and men would wear their hair long and often wrapped around their heads with beads. They would also wear perfumes or oils to dye their hair in a beautiful color. They also would wear headdresses as well. The clothing style would sometimes depend on the status of the individual. The rich would wear clothes made of very expensive materials and would be very colorful. And also they would love to adorn their body with jewelry, necklaces, and earrings it was also very common. They also were very fond of brooches, necks and chains, and the highest quality of animal skins that they could find. 
This brings us to the end of the Mesopotamian era. I would like to get articles and websites that helped me put together this presentation.